now live. Hola, hola. Michelle is here. Who is joining me today? Hola, hola, everyone. Cheryl is here. Rhonda. Cynthia. Emanuela is here. Who else is joining me today? My ladies, I am so excited and I'm not going to lie. I am, a, I am a little bit nervous. Um, it's a big day for us here at Carolina uh, because in the last few weeks, as you know, I started the, uh, to create and the ideas and content that is different to what we normally do. And um, I wanted to create this segment to talk about things that are positive and that are relevant for you, my lovely ladies. So when we put all the ideas together um, and we thought, okay, which topics there was and which people to invite, there was one at the top of my list um, and I have the courage to ask her if she wanted to come on board and um, I sent her a message, we exchanged a few messages and the answer was yes. And I am so delighted and I'm really, really, really happy and totally honored to have Melissa Doyle with us today joining, joining us live so we can all talk about a topic that you ladies are going to find um, relevant. I, in, in my heart, I think that um, you ladies are going to love it. So she's amazing. We're all very happy that she's going to join us today. And let me be with me because as you know, these things, I'm just inviting her now. I think that she's... Oh! <laughs> Hi! Hello! <laughs> Maybe I just fix this one a little bit. How are you? I'm well, Cara. How are you doing? Uh, I'm really good. And I'm re actually, I'm going to say, I'm a little bit nervous to have you here. <laughs> don't be. Don't be. You're just chatting to me. We're friends. Looks like Thank you're you. in store today. Whereabouts are you? I'm in Utrecht Bay. Good. So the store is closed, but look, you know, I have amazing company <laughs> with you. So thank you. I'm in Neutral Bay. Um, we've been closed for a while. And as you know, I created this little segment here to have, you know, something to look forward to for the yeah. followers and um, yeah, for our team as well. It's just such an honor that you said thank you. Um, for th thank you to coming today. See how nervous I am. <laughs> okay, okay. We both need to go. Ooh, take a deep breath. It is my honor. I think. Um, I think it's so important that all of us stay connected at the moment. We, whoever we're talking to, and whether it's friends or whether it's people that we're meeting for the very first time, but never have we really underlined the importance of connectivity. I think it's just really special. So I feel very honored to be asked. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think that is one of those things that um probably once everything is over and um, we are going to appreciate even more you know the yeah. value of having those relationships you know having that talk and you know ha knowing that we have always and i found that about australia just so fascinating um you guys are amazing and supporting each other and perfect example here so thank you <laughs> well it is my absolute pleasure <laughs> so tell me what have you been doing during the last few weeks in lockdown? Well, I will be honest, I'm, I'm secretly loving it. Um, <laughs> so just here out of shot on the floor, I've got a gorgeous little four and a half month old puppy dog, um, oh. a very sweet little border collie. She's divine. And Beauty. I've got my son home from the US and he's currently patting her belly. She's enjoying it. But he's at college in the States, so he's come home for his summer vacation, which is probably not the summer vacation that he had anticipated because he's in lockdown at home with his mum and dad and sister and a puppy. But um, I've got him all to myself and I'm super happy. So my daughter is currently sitting her HSC trial exams. So she's got her HSC in a few months, her final year of school. So look, to be really honest, I'm at home and I've got my family with me and they can't go anywhere. So they're stuck with me and I'm loving it. And we're just, I'm just making the most of having them here, which feels really precious. It's really precious time. 
fantastic you know i i think that that's you know one of the um one of the big pluses of all this time is you know time with the family and quality time mm -hmm. with the family that sometimes we get just so busy that we don't have it. so yeah. fantastic look mel um basically one of the things that i would love to talk to you about um today um i started reading probably a few months back about your new project and um call and please correct me if my pronunciation is not 100% early women perfect you're spot okay. on <laughs> <laughs> and aging age against the machine correct yes which look um i found it fascinating i think that you know you just nailed the topic is one of those topics that everyone wants to talk about but no one really does yeah so uh, i i just thought that you know and exploring that across different cultures so do you want to tell us a little bit more about it what it is and then we can get thanks. into it thanks yeah thank you i think it's it look it started last year i turned 50 in february 2020 and it was one of those things that everyone kept saying to me how do you feel about it and to be honest i felt fine you know it's another number i feel really lucky that i'm healthy and i'm relatively fit and active and all of those things and i obviously live in an extraordinary country and i'm very grateful and it got me thinking about as women how when we get older not only do we how do we feel about ourselves but how other people feel about us how they perceive us and mm -hmm. so you know being a journalist i always ask a million questions so we created this audio documentary called age against the machine and we explored women aging here in australia around the world different cultures where you know the matriarch is valued why some women are respected in different parts of the world or different industries more than others and what it was about why like the word invisible kept coming up how many women said that the older they got they felt invisible as though you know their childbearing years or their work years or whatever it might be had been and gone and they no longer felt of value and that was a really heartbreaking thing so we wanted to explore women aging why some women love it why some are fearful of it what it does we looked at homelessness and why some women fall through the cracks and all of those big issues we talked about everything from you know aesthetics plastic surgery why some women do it why some don't why some color their hair why some don't all those sort of things and then um off the back of it we created this website Ellie Women which is all about it's kind of our little place to talk about all of these issues and go a little bit further and explore the things that sometimes we don't always i mean look i'm sure like you i sit down and talk about these with my girlfriends and a glass of wine but don't necessarily talk about it in a wider group and so we wanted to create that place where women could bring up all of those issues that that are worrying them or that are you know concerning them or they had questions about um and that's essentially how Ellie was born fantastic yeah no and um, for me is now that you when i was reading about it it made me reflect and it made me realize that i grew up with a real figure of a matriarch in my family actually two yeah. both of my grandmothers really strong and none of them so age as you know something that was bothering them in fact you know they were just so confident that in my case i thought the older you get the wiser you get look at this chair yeah. <laughs> they seem that they <laughs> have figured out everything so um and you know here at carolina is something that um amazes me all the time because we have such a variety of um yeah. age groups you know we have in our team we have from 25 um all the way up to 65 and i think that something and the girls watching they probably be smiling because we do feed a lot out of that maturity you know it just i yeah. love what they bring to the table and you know the different the different um and it goes both ways doesn't it like i feel as though you know now is a you know a, a sort of a more how do i word it delicately but experienced woman you know been a bit that, that i have so much to learn from younger women and i also feel that i want to share so much with them i you know there's that compulsion to go well 
when I was your age, this is what happened, this is what I learnt from it. And if I can help you in any way, if I can offer any sort of advice, Correct. if I can pass you any pearl of wisdom, then please take it in the way that it's intended, purely just to help you along. It's like when you become a mum, you know, everyone's got advice for you. Some of it you take everyone, on board, some of it you everyone. say, thanks, but no thanks. Everyone knows how yeah. to raise your child yeah. than you. Everyone. That is so true. So I feel like ageing is a little bit the same. It's like, well, this might help one person. It might help someone else. It might not. That's okay. Um, but we've all got to forge a path for one another. And I think just share stories. It's all about no matter what our age or anything, it's about sharing stories which is exactly what we're doing today it's what you're doing i think that's the most important thing that we can do because because when you hear that someone else is experiencing something similar to you it just makes you feel better it makes you feel yeah. normal you know like don't you think and lockdown correct. i don't know about you but i've got days where i never want to get out of my own boots <laughs> correct yeah. correct you know once you normalize it and i yeah. think that that's why you're doing such a good job i mean um i am i'm almost 40 now and spring chicken you know wow i i spent half of my adult life in australia so um, and then, you know, it's just so many things going on and then it becomes a relevant topic, but one that not everyone wants to talk about, like yeah. I'm getting my first gray hair. <laughs> and, when, and when I look at it in the mirror, it's like, oh, not only lockdown, not only everything that is going on, I'm eating <laughs> like there is no tomorrow. Same, shocking. <laughs> and I don't call chocolate. mine gray. I call them Arctic blonde. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating chocolate every day on the day. Uh, lockdown. Yeah. yeah when, once we go out, I will figure it out how to go back. But you know, all these things happening. And I think that the fact that you make it a topic that is kind of like a taboo yeah. in a way, um, just you making it normal, it makes us all feel so good about it. Like, like you know, it's, it's normal. We all going through it. And if we can yeah. look up to, one you know the, the ones that are going just a little bit forward and um, then us then it's is um it's amazing to feel the process and that we all literally in that together as well yeah and i think too you know with, with aging it's inevitable and the alternative is not particularly pleasant because it means you're no longer here so hey every year that we have every age that we get is a gift and i'm really really grateful that i'm still alive and kicking and well but i understand that not everybody has the same journey that for some people it is fearful and for some people it does bring um pain or it does bring other factors and and that isn't how they saw it for other women it's wonderful and it's joyous so I think it's just really important that we share all of the different journeys that we're having. And if we can all just reach out to one another and make us all feel a little bit better about it. And, and you know, why, why do some women not fear it? Why does it work better for them? And, and, you know, a couple of the things that we found were making sure that you still got a purpose, making sure that you still have things that feel like you're contributing to the world, that you're, whether it's doing what you're doing and it's creating and it's bringing beautiful things into our lives or whether it's passing on your wisdom or whether it's, you know, whatever it is that you might be doing. But that is so important to keeping people feeling as though they can contribute. And so we found that was probably one of the biggest things that came through and what we learned. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's share ways we can all make sure that we feel that way so on that note i have now um, i'm gonna look into my um followers questions there was one that i found really interesting and it is here from rebecca she wanted to ask you if you could go back and tell yourself something at 18 years old what it will be <laughs> good question rebecca i <laughs> i think for me, it would be just enjoy it all. You know, I think when I first started my career, I was so keen to get going and to work hard and to make sure that I got to where I wanted to be. And, you know, you grow up with all of these dreams we all do of what you want to do and who you want to be and all of those things. And I think I was just so, so busy. You know, you jump on the treadmill, don't you? And you just keep going and going. And keep going. now I think I probably would say to myself, just occasionally slow down and reflect on how much fun you're having 
and where you were at and, and what you're doing. Like savour the moment a little bit more. Don't be always in such a hurry that, you know, a cliche, but stop and smell the roses. You know, I don't want to fly past them and miss them. Um, so, yes, I think that's probably what I'd say to myself is just just enjoy it. Yeah, and then on that note, also, when you reflect on your career, what do you think that, uh, because we were all very excited that you were joining us today, and um, one of the questions that keep popping up over and over again is like, the followers would love to know, and myself, uh, tell me about the highlight of your career. Oh my gosh, I, 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 <laughs> you I may couldn't. A few, you may have a few. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't give you one. I think, I feel so incredibly grateful that I've had the opportunities that I've had. And I've interviewed some extraordinary people. Some of them I've loved, some of them not. I've done stories. I've, I've probably, my favorite stories have been when I've covered moments in history. You know, I was so privileged I could stand in front of um, the Vatican when the Pope was announced and I reported live at Barack Obama's inauguration and, you know, William and Kate's wedding and, and Harry and Meghan's wedding and, and you know, <laughs> moments in time that really um, affected me. And then, you know, things back here in Australia covering the Lint Cafe siege and as horrific and sad as it was, but they were just these, these bookmarks that come along in, in life, you know, our lifetime. And as a journalist, that's all I ever wanted to do was to be there in the moment covering the news. So those are moments that I'm, I'm really, really grateful that I had. And, and interviewing, like I say, interviewing, you know, Tom Cruise and Jane Fonda and Katy Perry and Justin Bieber and, you know, really cool people. It's been a lot of fun meeting them and seeing what goes on behind all the, the gloss and the front. Um, but telling people stories, it all comes down to that for me and not necessarily stories of people that are known or that have a profile, of, of meeting people that are doing amazing things in the world and have overcome adversity and have this incredible strength about them. Being able to share their story with an audience has been the best part of my job and what I do. And I, I love that I can highlight some of the extraordinary things that people do. Yeah. Fantastic. And then one of the things that I found fascinating and um, when I was reading about early women, oh, I'm so sorry. When I was reading <laughs> an alarm, but of the, I have a Woolworths next to me. So probably they're doing the, <laughs> the lunch time. I don't. Whoops. <laughs> as long as you don't have to evacuate in the middle of this, we're okay. <laughs> So one of the things that uh, when I was reading through early women, I found fascinating as well um, that you have done a lot of research with African communities and, you know, how um, the perception there of, of the women and stuff. I just, if you want to share with us a little bit about that, that would be fantastic. Yeah, we were really intrigued. So Naima is my gorgeous friend and producer, and we worked on this together. And, and the two of us were very intrigued by why some cultures value women and, and others not so much. And the role of women in leadership, you know, when, when you're in a community where a woman is a leader, does that set women up? better for, for aging? Are they looked after more? So we spoke about, we spoke to an African, a, an African queen, a queen mother in Ghana, oh. and she was extraordinary. We, we spoke to a high priestess in Indonesia, different cultures where the leadership isn't necessarily always formalized, but mm -hmm. they, have an, they have a really vital role to play within their community and the strength that that brought. So our beautiful queen mother in Ghana, in Africa, was incredible, talked about the fact that she was able to speak to the young girls in her village and give them some advice and make sure you finish schooling and don't get married too early. And, you know, these are the good things that I've done in my life that might set you up for a good future. So... I, I loved, you know, we spoke to some First Nations women here in Australia. We, we talked to this most amazing Maori woman in New Zealand and different cultures that, that place almost more value on women as they get older because they recognise their wisdom and their lived experience. And so that felt really precious and it, it just made us question why we don't do it probably enough around That's the world. My next question, why do you think that it could be one of the biggest learnings um, that they do around the world that we can possibly um, implement here that will, you know, put us in a, 
in a different place. Yeah, I think it's the respect, isn't it? It's respect for what all of us bring to the table that, you know, I think we need to respect the younger generation because they're the ones that are keen and hungry and, you know, wanting to keep changing the world and discovering things and, oh, my gosh, may that never stop. But may we also respect the role of our, for one of another term, elders and that they have a lot to contribute. They have experience. They have wisdom. They've probably been through what you're going through to some extent. It might be slightly different, but essentially it's, you know, very much a lot of it is very, very similar. So just that that respect for both age groups, for, for men and women, it's, none of this was about women versus men by any chance. It was just we were looking at women because we are women and I, you know, don't know much about men, but, um, you know, being able to work out how we complement one another and why it's important. So it was just a lot of questions we asked on, you know, how do we go about it? So, yeah, I think it's just valuing the different contributions that we all have. I think that really would probably make us respect one another in a way that maybe we just haven't thought about doing enough. And do you think that confidence, so let's just talk a little bit about confidence. Yeah. Because I a relevant part of that topic as well. And um, there is something that from my personal experience, um, and I remember years ago, like literally, I don't know, uh, 16, 17 years ago, when I had my first job, mm -hmm. um, we were sitting in a sales meeting and then uh, the big boss, he basically just asked us to say, if you're coming to, the, to negotiate with this client, uh, what would you bring to the table? So I'm, I was in my early 20s. And literally what I thought is that I would bring my biggest smile and my job. <laughs> and there is this amazing woman called Carol. Um, I hope that she one day, um, I, I'm bumping to her again. She, turned, she was in her 50s and she turned around and she said like, I will bring my confidence because I have, what you guys thought that moment stay stuck with me since then and yeah. my confidence she was and she was amazing at what she was doing she, i mean we both had the same role and she was absolutely amazing she was very very generous as well with her knowledge i was just starting up in a multinational wow. company and she was you know i I probably just consider myself very lucky that I had all the um, women around me and that I could learn, as you said, from their experiences. But that one definitely marked me. I, the way she said confidence. So I would love to talk to you a little bit about confidence. What do you think about it? What's your perception? And yeah. Um, I think for me, it ebbs and flows. I'll be really honest. I think back to some times when I was young, I remember, um, working at channel when I first got my job at channel seven. So I'd worked in Canberra in regional television and I'd quit my job in Canberra and I moved home to Sydney and I basically knocked on the door of channel seven and said, hi, I'm here. I'm not leaving until you give me a job. I'll make coffee. I'll stack the papers. I'll do whatever. You don't even need to pay me, but I'm not going anywhere, you know? And then I got a job freelancing. And then from there, when a full-time position came up, I was Johnny on the spot and I got it. And then a role came up for Sunrise and I asked to audition. And there's been moments along the way that I think back and I, I kind of have that moment of going, oh, my God, wow, I'm so glad I had the guts to put my hand up and ask for a go to say, you know, I remember saying I was in Canberra on my very first job out of university. So I'm 20 years old. I'm as green as anything. I have no idea what I'm doing. And the weather presenter left the role and I was a journalist and I asked the boss if I could try out to be the weather girl. Uh -huh. And he's like, well, you've never done it. What would you know? And I just said to him, give me a go. Put me on a Friday night where not many people are watching. And if I bomb it, we'll never talk about this again. But at least give me a go, you know. And now I think back to some of those moments of, of I'm incredulous that I actually had the guts to do that because there's other days where, you know, I don't know about you, but I feel like I just want to sit quietly in the corner and, and, you know, melt into the wall so nobody can see me because I don't have the confidence or the courage to do what I think I should or I want to. So I guess, to be really honest, like I say, for me, it ebbs and flows. Sometimes I have the guts, other times I don't. Sometimes it depends on how I wake up feeling that day. Um, I feel like it's just one of those things that as long as you have it when you need it, I guess, and there's other times when maybe we don't feel it, but that's okay. 
But this is the beauty of this conversation because that makes it normal. You know, you don't have to feel that you're on top of everything, you know. Yeah. Well, not all the time anyway. <laughs> yeah. So some days that seriously, I, you know, for me, I, I do think sometimes my probably depends on the level of tiredness. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Sometimes I feel that my brain and my ideas have different yeah. <laughs> yeah yesterday you know we like it was idea after idea after idea and then you know sometimes you have your days in which and and we yeah. don't again we don't talk a lot about it we feel that yeah. you know we have to feel in control um of everything and then at the end of the day is part of the process and accepting that process and that become you know and um, that will make it easier for you to yeah. don't with things and I get very overwhelmed. Like I, I liken it to if I'm in a car and I'm in, a, I'm in a bog, the mud, and the wheels are spinning and I can't get a grip and I get a bit overwhelmed by all the things that I have going on and they're the moments that I go, okay, let's just stop and take a breath. Let's break it down. Let's just do my, my – I've always got my to-do list every day I, next to me. You know, just sort of having that, that moment to regroup and I think – when for me when I do that is when I probably can get a little more confidence back because I can break it into tangible steps that I can manage and and you know what to do next and you know where to go so yeah I think I think confidence you know not not everybody is is like that lovely lady Carol that was able to just straight out say it I don't know I feel like for a lot of us it it comes and goes depending on other circumstances but I think sharing it and also giving it to other people is really important one of the things I love doing so much is mentoring and you know I will talk to young girls and they say to me oh there's this job but I don't know whether I should go for it and what do you think and it's and I say to them okay can you have you got the skills can you do it do you want to do it have you learned what you need to learn etc go through the list and if you tick those boxes then go for it. And if you don't tick all of them, don't worry about it. Go for it anyway. What have you got to lose? So, you know, sometimes I think we maybe need to give one another confidence and, and remind our nearest and dearest that they've got this. If they're having a day where they're feeling a bit wobbly and not quite sure, you know, step up and tell your girlfriend she's amazing and super smart and, and, and has it all in hand and give her a bit of what Carol gave you. Yeah, correct. And how that, you know, that makes a massive difference. And, you know, it's communities, um, you know, we have it at work. We, we, I feel I'm very blessed with the amazing women that I um, work with, the fantastic, amazing girlfriends that I have that, yeah. you know, when I live away from my family, they are literally my family and they are there to support, to encourage and, and to tell you, you know, girl, everything will be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, it's part of what we're going through. So it is it is amazing. And um, Mel, I don't want to take a lot of your time, um, but if there is I, just the last question, what's next for you? So you're working on LA Women and your podcast. Uh, what's next for Mel, though? I love telling stories. So any way that I can, I'll keep going. I've got a book I'm writing. Um, it's not about me, it's okay. So a collection of stories of other people. Um, I've got a few other little projects, television projects in the work that I'm doing, the works that I'm developing and doing. And I just, I'm, I'm just intrigued by what makes the world keep turning, who we all are. I just think, you know, I often, you would say to my kids when they were little, but we're all cogs in this giant wheel and we've all got a role to play and every single one of us is just as important as the next. I just love hearing about what other people are doing and I love sharing that and I'm always intrigued. You know, I look at what you do and what you've built and and it's, it's more than a, you know, I'm not making this sound like an ad, but it's more than a label. It is something. You've got a wonderful community and that is really, really important and really precious. So telling other people those stories and spreading that word, whatever it might be, whether it's a story of somebody who's found themselves in prison, whether it's, you know, a story I'm doing, um, the Jonestown, uh, um, you know, someone that had been in a cult and, and had survived and, you know, like d whatever it might be, I just am fascinated by, by telling people stories. So I just want to keep doing that. Probably finding the essence of life because it's just yeah. like, 
treasure and it's so unique and it makes everything just so um you know you you cannot stop amazing yourself when you go yes. on and be curious exactly yeah. Like, yeah. you look forward to everything you know and um, something different i guess i you know what an interesting um journey that you are on at the moment because you know i can only imagine that you surprise yourself of over and over again of how um you know how everyone yeah. is so different and how things work differently for everyone and and yeah and i'm sure i drive my family bonkers because i'm always you know that's a story i'd love to know what that person's doing i wonder why they're doing that why do you think they got there da, 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 da. you know like i can't help it and i'm sure i drive my friends and family bonkers but um i'm just always curious i just think you know the old never judge a book by its cover you know everybody has a story behind them everybody has a journey that's got them to where they are or where they're going next and that to me is just the most fascinating thing in the world so i would love to just keep exploring that and asking those questions forever and ever fantastic i mean well look what an enjoyable chat i think that your passion just shines through exactly exactly what we wanted uh for this space i just know that the followers will be so happy this will be like an injection of happiness <laughs> but they well lives can i say right back at you i think your injection of passion is incredible i love that you adore your community who are all part of this that you want to give them a cup of tea and a catch up on a wednesday afternoon i think that's really really precious so may all of us keep doing that but i'm yeah thank you for inviting me it's been lovely i wish we could be sitting somewhere doing it in person <laughs> yeah and all this is over i can't wait Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope we can invite you again here yeah. anytime. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a lovely rest of the afternoon you and too. stay safe. Ciao. Thank ciao. you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.